14 through 20. Verse 14 says again, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. So, obviously Jesus wasn't around at first, right? So, we, we, we know that Jesus walked up on them. But I had this question for, for the kids when we, when we talked about this uh, on Thursday. Man, do you think the, the man was looking for the disciples only? Or do you think he was looking for, uh, for Jesus and he just had to sell for the disciples because he wasn't around? I mean, most, anytime you really want to hear what happened and you know Jesus is in the area, you go on the search for him. Right? And not only that, though, it's not like the disciples, they have the ability or the power to do so. They did. Jesus previously gave them the authority to cast out demons. Right? He previously gave them the uh, ability, the authority to do what's necessary in his name. Right? To cast out demons, heal people, all of that good stuff. But this time, it was of no luck, right? And so when Jesus came into the area, he see all of this, these gangs of people. He's like, man, what's going on here? I mean, what's, 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 what's happening? And then all of the people came, and then the scribe came forth and said, hey, I brought my son here to catch him. He has a dumb spirit, Right? This particular spirit made him mute, made him made him mute, and possibly even deaf. But that's that. I mean, that's something that's something hard to to imagine that's going on to, to deal with for a long time. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, well, the child wasn't born like this, but then. This didn't happen, and as we read through, we see it's been going on for years, right? Years. It's like Jesus asked, "Man, how long has this been going on?" He was like, "Man, since he was a youth." Now we don't know how old the child is in this picture. However, we can assume that he's, you know, at least around seven or eight. And my assumption is when I read it, at least when I use my imagination about it, it sounds like this has been going on since he was a toddler. At least that's how I picture it. Now you got to take that, that's just my imagination. I ain't got that in no study, nothing like that, right? Yes, sir. I was just thinking, um, you know, when I was growing up, um, you know, my dad, um, I had graduated from high school, waiting to get into the military. So, so I was working on the construction site with my dad, and um, you know we've been we've been you know putting cement, you know making sidewalks. Mm -hmm. you know, I was doing it with him for a while. Then so um, so we had laid the foundation and everything. Then the big truck come. I'm like I was 18 years old, and, and this truck pulled up, the big cement truck pulled up. So mm -hmm. so, so long I've been doing it with my, my dad, but um. I'm looking around for him, but I know we had to do the playing stuff. So, so here it is. I'm, I'm like looking for him. This truck here, you know, come to find out he was hiding around the corner, seeing what I, how how I would react to it. Mm -hmm. So I thought about that. So I, all I could do was everything he taught me was coming out of that moment, and I was like, so I ended up doing it. And you know, later on he came around and started like, you know, the guys up up there on the roofs and everything was just watching. <laughs> That's what I thought about. Did I panic or did the, um, you know, his disciples panic when they couldn't perform this bill? So, okay. Now I'm just, no, I mean, so. I, think that's, I think that's a valid argument, right? Yeah. I believe, especially after the first couple times I done tried and it happened. Yeah, yeah I would panic too. Yeah. I would say, like, hey man, I know he gave me the authority. I'm doing what he told me to do. Yeah. And you know what? Ain't nothing happening. So I, I, I was starting to get a little frantic too, right? So I, thank you for that's that's a that's a good comment. And said, 
Verse 18, and whosoever he taketh him, he teareth him and foameth and gnasheth his teeth and repenteth away and, and spake to thy disciples and they should cast him out and they could not. So not only was the spirit making the man new, but he put him into seizures, having convulsions and things like that. Right? That's, that's scary as a parent. When you see your child doing stuff like that, right? And then, at least now, we know in our day and age, right, we can go try to get some help. Like, these are depending on the miracle. Like, ain't no medication, nothing. This is, hey, this is all I got is prayer. Right? I got the disciples, I got Jesus, and... Hopefully that'll be enough. And so Jesus turned to him and answered and said, Oh, faithless generation. Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, Deacon Hayes, if your dad had sat there and witnessed you floundering and pouring that concrete, he even said something like this. Well, you ain't been listening at all, have you? ain't been doing, you ain't been doing nothing I taught you. You just been here lollygagging, and you had the phone back then, looking at them comic books, whatever. <laughs> <coughs> right? So, like Jesus wasn't even, he wasn't even speaking back and forth with the disciples. But once the man told him the situation, yeah, I just, he turned around, y'all, faithless jokers. <laughs> How long am I supposed to be here? I done told you I got to go. And y'all still can't do this? Right? <laughs> so, I mean, you, you know how it is, right? You, you can't get it until you get it. You can't, it's, in some situations, it's just hard work and name and experience. They have been exposed to a whole lot from Jesus' hand. But then you also got to look at it like, man, that's Jesus. Like, he did that. I can't compare. Right? That's just like me sitting up here watching LeBron James play basketball. And I'm, let me try to go out there and do that. I don't think it's going to look the same. It ain't going to look, look quite right. Not like me do it. But, in the grand scheme of things, like I said, he gave us the power. He gave us the ability. He gave us the authority to go make these things happen. All right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And also, you know, Jesus taught his disciples that man did not live by bread alone, but by every way to give them all the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, they should have taken it to the next stage, you know, with the cause of. Uh, even Jesus talked to him that, uh, he said, you know, Jesus, you know, you need to eat, you need to eat food. He said, he said I don't need to just, you know, eat meat. I got my meat from above. He said, the meat, you know, this is the kind of meat that I need from above. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was always trying to teach them about the spiritual side and, uh, of faith and everything. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> that is absolutely true. And the other thing about that is that we have to realize that we have to recognize the gravity of each situation that we encounter. All right? I mean, everything ain't the same. Everything is not just because the devil is doing something. It could just be a health condition. All right? I, some people will take this word so seriously that anytime they see anybody who's deaf, they'll think they're demon-possessed. But you have to you have to have the discernment to be able to tell what's what, right? Like all situations ain't the devil. All situations aren't just us uh, a natural illness either. So we have to be able to be able to decipher between the two. I mean, prayer gonna work every time anyway, right? So praying about it will allow us to get some kind of intuition on what, which way to go, right? We might not be able to fix it, 
but we, we can still pray about it and let the Lord's will be done for that situation. Yes, ma'am. I was thinking you were talking about praying, and there will be an answer. And it may not come when we want it. Oh, no. Mama said it's always on the time, but I was reading something also that said prayer is like like an egg that has an entry mm -hmm. And uh, it takes time. So you got to wait for that process to take place. That's right. As it goes through that incubation period. That's right. That's right. I was uh, working on sermon for next week, right? And one of the scriptures talks about how we, uh, we as people of God, are going to see troubles. We're going to, we're going to have tribulation. We're going to suffer, right? And the fact that we are Christians means that we're going to persevere even through this service. So, right? It don't mean we're not going to. We're going to, we're going to face some hard situations. Like, when most people face these situations that I'm talking about, it makes them question God. It makes them question whether God even exists. Question what, how good is God for real, for real. All right? And we're going to encounter those situations, but though he, we have his spirit within us, it allows us to persevere through through this suffering because we all like we all know in Galatians five, right? One of the fruits of the spirit, long suffering, long suffering. I mean, sometimes we, I mean, think about Job. He had to go through it for a while, and although he didn't say some stuff outside out the side of his neck. Right? God checked him and he, he was back on the road, right? But he never said anything wayward towards about God towards his friends, to his friends, right? He always said, whatever God gives it, God can take it away. It wasn't mine to deal with, it wasn't mine to be given. So we're gonna keep on going. Yes, sir. Uh one of my younger sister, she uh for almost 30 years now, she's been suffering with uh, diabetes, pain, uh, got fingers cut off, they want to take all her teeth off, they want to cut her toes off, and she's on dialysis two or three times, two times I think a week, and she's been doing this, she's almost 60 years old, she's been doing this since she was in her early 30s, mm -hmm. and we talked a few days ago, and she was telling me about all she had to go through, and she suffered all her life, she said, Carl, you know, you know, I'm trying to keep the faith, I'm doing this, I'm reading the word, but as she getting older and more sickly, she can't get no support from her husband, you know, like things she won't done in the house. She can't do it no more. And she said, he's not doing it. And that put more pressure and hold on her. But she said, I'm doing everything I can to keep my faith, you know, read the Bible, believe in God, everything. But she said, it's hard. It's hard. Some people go through a lot of suffering than others. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Some people absolutely suffer more than others. But, I mean, just know that it's for a purpose. Yes. It's, it's meant to drive you closer to God. That's the whole purpose. All right? I mean, you might get relief, but like Rory said, it won't be on your timeline. It'll be on his. Amen? Amen. Quick question. Yes, sir. I just personally, going back, I'm going to do this personally. Mm -hmm. When you was, we were talking about the disciples, and Jesus had been teaching them all this time. What's your opinion? No, 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 no. I'm not even that way. Is there a difference between hearing and listening? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. That's a difference. That's, oh, a big difference. That's, okay. that's a big difference between hearing and listening. Uh, just because. I hear my wife call in the background, don't necessarily mean. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I heard you say something. Right. I ain't got a clue what it was. And even though I can I can regurgitate back to you what, what you said to me, that still don't mean I don't listen to you. Exactly. Yet. Right? And I thought about this like, that's what came across my mind when we were talking, while we were talking about this like, they were hearing Jesus, but they were not listening to you. Right. 
and that happened so many times in the Bible where Jesus would tell them specifically, this is what's about to happen. And they're like, uh, all right. They, they ain't got a clue what he means by any of them. A single clue. So, no, nah, you, you, there is a major difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you think about uh, listening, think about the understanding. Understanding comes with listening. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and actually hearing and listening all comes together, but the focal point is that understanding and that comprehension. That's right. That's right. You got that. I mean, you ain't, you ain't listening to nothing if you don't truly understand what they're talking about. When you listen, most of the time, you have some questions to follow up just to Correct. gain that full <laughs> understanding of what you're talking about. Just like uh, with Jesus' death and resurrection, he told the disciples, mm -hmm. what, in three days? Mm -hmm. He yeah. specifically pointed all of that out. But they didn't get it. Yeah. In. And, and not on one occasion either. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. All right, anybody else? All right. Um, Verse 21, and he asked his father, how long is it ago since he came into him? And he said, of a child. We already talked about that one. And oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now, this is one of the questions I got from the girls. Like, um, excuse me. Man, why did he die if he cast him into the fire and into the water? Right? Why, why didn't the child die? Well, I have to let them know that God is sovereign. Right? God has a sovereign will. God allows right, people to die. But if he don't want you to die, you ain't going to. I don't care what happens. I don't care what you, I don't care if you try to do it yourself. I don't care if he got a plan for you, right? If he has a plan for you, and that plan hasn't happened yet, man, ain't nothing gonna happen to you. You might go through some pain. You might, you might end up crippling yourself or whatever, but you won't die because he has a plan, and his plan will not come back to him. His word will not come back to him. Right? Yes, sir. Um, I guess there's a, a follow up to that. Um, I think so. If, if the child had died, then this miracle wouldn't have been performed, mm -hmm. and the disciples wouldn't have learned um, what they were supposed to learn in this case. So I think the other follow up is that even if you're suffering with something, the lesson may not necessarily be just for you, it might be for the people that's actually I can lose seeing the suffering. Absolutely. <laughs> now, that's, that's, a, that's a great point. And I've uh, counseled people at work and just around who uh, they like to say crazy stuff, right? They, they talk about uh, they don't necessarily want to be burdens on their kids and all of this other stuff. And so if they ever find themselves needing to needing help in that manner, they say they just commit suicide, right? And I'm like, hey man, you can't, you can't do that. Even though somebody's assisting you, you might be the message God is using to get done, right? Because, like, I don't necessarily, I don't like to, to mix words with people, right? I, I try not to sugarcoat nothing. I try to tell you straight up what's, what, what the deal is, right? Because I don't want you walking away confused about what I just said, right? And so, when talking to folks um, about being a burden on somebody, like people don't like to use the word burden because it just, it feels so painful. It's like, but in reality, when you were born, when you were burdened on your parents? Like, I mean, so what's the difference? They took care of you to raise you. Now, it's your turn. 
I mean, I don't understand. This, this is the same stuff. Yeah, it brings you joy, and I'm sure it will bring your child joy to see you every day as long as they can. Right? It might not feel like it in the moment, but when you leave here, watch them move and watch them cry and watch how sad they'll be because they can't talk to, see, hug, feel, smell their parent anymore. Right? I mean, so although it might be a burden, it's still a blessing, regardless of the fact. But I might be too harsh to so try to take that into consideration, but I mean, I, I, I need folks to actually get the message of there's never really a good reason to, to allow somebody to take something out. That is, uh, that is something for God to do, right? That's not your choice. It's not my choice. That's God's choice and God's choice only. Like, I, I might not be, I might not agree with God, but who am I? Right? That's not my task. That's not my job. That's not my position to question whether he did the right thing or not. My, my job is to obey and do what he wills for me to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, speaking about now obeying God, I think it was yesterday, or yesterday I was reading some of the Second Kings, something like that. Well, some God had to raise up the lions and stuff to go out and attack and eat the man and stuff for their disobedience. And lately, you know, I've seen a lot of the Old Testament where you see God will always raise up an adversary to punish the evil doer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like it talks about in Romans chapter one, one to eleven, where that you know. Uh, race of sin and death, and, uh, you know, and uh, so God will always up, you know, up into your, like a, you have a bad president or a bad king mm -hmm. because the children will disobedient and turn your back on God. The scripture that says that my people humble themselves and repent, turn back to God, and God will heal you. But if you disobey Him everywhere you go, you know, you will be cursed, and then the opposite, everywhere you go, you'll be blessed if you obey Him. Mm -hmm. So you got to have, you know, you see what, what God does. You know, it really involves with what people do. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even, so along those the same thoughts, right? I often think about and talk to other people about um, just allowing your your works to be what they are, right? If you're gonna do good, do good. Don't look at the people who have it all, the people who have all the money, who have all the women, who have all the uh, stuff, right? And think and look at their life as Oh well, that's what I want to get to, right? Oftentimes, right, whenever they lose all of that stuff, we don't think about them again ever, right? And God is going to take people down who's not following Him. So I don't care how long you think they had it, how long they keep it, I don't, it doesn't matter, right? None of that actually matters. And I understand that you might be following God and suffering somewhat. But just know that you got a relationship with God. And that means more than everything in the world. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Uh, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child's cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Now, anybody got any thoughts on why they why he would have some unbelief? I mean we when we you wouldn't that so a seed of doubt you went to the disciples and they kept doing it? I don't be a little doubt. Like, oh man. This is a uh, I mean, the most powerful people I know. Besides Jesus. They can't do it. I, yeah, I got a little unbelief. I seen that sorcerer do something like this like two years ago. Right? I seen this guy who over there following Buddha, he did something similar. But then I come to 
Jesus and his disciples and the disciples can't do nothing. Man, I, I've been riding with you all this time. And I believe, but you know, some recent things didn't happen and made me start question. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. He said, when Jesus saw the people came running together, and he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Now, the last portion of what Jesus said right there, that's pretty significant, right? He said, enter into him no more. And like most of the times, when people have spirits cast out of them, right, that spirit just comes right back. Except for <laughs> Comes right back. All right, dealing with the same issues that you just got healed from. Even more. But once again, God's word won't come back to him void. And so he cast the spirit out. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, came out of him, and he was as one dead, in so much that they said he was dead. He looked like he had given up the ghost. Right. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming into the house of his disciples, he asked them privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Nothing but prayer and fasting. So, I had this thought, right? I didn't hear, in, at least in this little short scripture, I didn't hear Jesus pray not one time. I didn't see it. Did y'all catch that? Jesus ain't pray. I don't know if he's already fasting or not and have no clue. So we're that the disciples were supposed to pray and fast. I mean, when they encountered the situation, they would that's when they would have got the, the heads up to start praying for this situation, right? What's so this, okay. what's the saying? Pray go. Stay prayed up. Pray. Jesus is always praying. Pray. Jesus is and he's the Almighty, all powerful, and all he had to do was speak the word. Yeah. Well, he do no sin. Yeah, that's true. Remember when he was baptized by John? Mm -hmm. And then he went and tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that's where it started. Well, actually, was reading it, how he was tempted. Continue to show his power, you know, believe, trust in, in his father. So I guess that was teaching us, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that's why he came back through here and said, you know, prayer and fasting because, mm -hmm. you know, once you get to that point of fasting, you know, you, oh, you got to be strong to, to, to actually <coughs> give up something, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then ask the Lord to help you through. Yeah. It's the point, you know. Well, that was that was part of his lifestyle. He always prayed and fasted. So he, that was his lifestyle, praying and fasting. He always had. Like I just said earlier, that Jesus said, you know, I don't need no food. You know, you know my family, I have to keep my spiritual meat from above. He always stayed prayed up and fast. And then he knew no sin. Of course. So I thought about this thing a different way. Right? So what came to my mind is, well, Jesus is God, so that don't really apply to True indeed. However, his statement still stands true. Because once the man said, help me, right? I believe, but help my unbelief. He was talking to who? Talking to the Son of God. God, for all intents and purposes. That's prayer. And if your child is going through something that detrimental, man, how often do you eat? Probably not much. I mean, somebody probably got to make you eat. 
I know you ain't nothing in a while. I mean, I mean, if it's that traumatic, right? If it's really that traumatic, you, I mean, you, you have to remember to eat because hunger pains just don't come no more. All of the stress going on within your body, this, this just, it just doesn't come naturally as it normally should, right? So I don't know if he was fasting or not, but I know for a fact that the scriptures say, show us, that he talked to Jesus. So that, to me, that's prayer. Y'all follow me? Y'all with me? Or am I out to lunch? Y'all can tell me if I am. Y'all can, can let me know if I'm just, if I'm making stuff up here, y'all let me know. But that that's prayer, right? So I, I read this in the ESV, and it doesn't talk about the fasting part. It just says food prayer. It just says food prayer only. Right? And it's not necessarily that the disciples wouldn't have acknowledged that or, or figured that thing out. But Jesus still got to show his power to the multitude because he saw them coming. Right? And he had to go ahead and make it happen. Because oftentimes, right, when Jesus works, he don't want to be around the crowd. Right? I don't need no unbelieving people around me, and I can't stop them where we at. We all outside at the moment. I ain't got I ain't got nowhere to tell them to go. We can't be secluded in a room or nothing. So let me go and make this happen and get out the way. Right? We had to go ahead and make it happen. So, the Father's prayers were answered by Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. So, at the end of this, it says, by prayer and fashion. Today, the all Christian prayer, right? I mean, uh, yeah, prayer. Mm -hmm. So, what about the fasting part? I think a few months ago, I asked, you know, so some of the church would be fasting. You know, the, the, some Christians, uh, be, uh, some people could be so hooked on football that, that they can't go to say, I ain't going to church today. I got to stay home with my football. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I got to have this special food or something. You know, I got to have this. And then they can't get to Jesus because they're so consumed with their worldly possessions or what they need. Mm -hmm. And if they don't you know, get themselves a break from that, they can't uh, draw closer to God. That's true. So that's what I said. That's absolutely true. And, you know, like it talks about in the scriptures, the last day, the church is going to be lukewarm and need a hot or cold. Mm -hmm. and, and because they've been consumed with uh, you know, all this worldly stuff, you know, going out the news or whatever. Right, right. There's so many things that draw folks' attention. So many things. You're 100% right. But, like, like we all talked about here, right? The initial thing is to believe. Believe in God, believe in Jesus, believe in the Holy Spirit. And if, as long as we believe, right, we should be doing anything that they direct us to do. Any and everything. All right. Well, that's all I got for today. Anybody got any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Especially when you're young, right? 
we, we, we live long enough to let the world beat us upside the head enough to actually understand and know that, man, this is only through God's grace that I'm here. It's only through God's grace that I can do this or I can do that, right? And so we have to keep that at the forefront of our minds. All right, so another comment. Um, even though, you know, a, a lot of us, you know, accept Christ, the Lord and Savior, we get baptized. And it takes more than just that, too. Once you accept Christ, you got to learn, you got to learn and study. You know, you got to learn and study and get, get more out of, out of the studies, you know, learn. Mm -hmm. Even though his disciples were with him, and through their learning and teaching, when they realized they couldn't perform this, they did have enough courage to ask him why we couldn't do this. And it's good to ask, ask. It's good to question, you know, your fellow saints. You know, we need to, um, I don't know how many people come to you and ask you, you know, you know, I've been praying and God having to answer my prayers. You know, mm -hmm. it's good to communicate. You know, don't go around. You know, it's good. It's okay to communicate. You know, that's why we're here. That's why we're all fellowship. You know, it's good to ask. You know, yeah. it's good fasting and praying, but it's also, you know, God wants us to uh, help yeah. be together. Yeah, it's all it's about fellowship. Yeah, fellowship. Right? It's all about fellowship. It's all about us living the example that God has for us. Like, we're supposed to be the example to the rest of the world. And as we live that example, right, and they acknowledge, man, there's something different about uh, Sister Juliet. I, I just got to go ask her, what's, what's going on? What, what, you, what are you be doing? And right, so it's, it's, we have to live that life. We have to live the life. And we also have to be able to be willing to share our testimony. Right? We can't walk around in this day and age knowing that when we were younger, we were hell raisers too. Right? We we have to walk, we have to let people know the stupid stuff that we done too. Because they looking at you at where you at now. And they can only see where you at now. So if you never tell them, they think you always that way. They think that's how you grew up. God just gifted you this. No, no, no. It was some hard days that got me to this point. Right? I had to go through some stuff. Right? I mean, and that's one reason why I think the new generation doesn't believe in suffering. They don't believe in having to go through something. Right? I, everything should just be given to me. Right? When I trust God, my life should be perfect after that. No, nah, that ain't how this works. Right? Moses, he, he wasn't perfect. But you can't think you're on the same level as Moses. That joke killed somebody and he, and he didn't go to the promised land. He had to die on the mountain across the Jordan. Can you imagine how hard that was? Dealing with all of those people? Man, this is, this is suffering. So we got to be able to share our testimonies. We got to be able to tell them the stupid stuff that we did and all of this stuff. And yeah, you can come talk to me about it. I give you advice all day long. Right? Because most people don't want to talk to somebody that's been born with it. Because they just can't relate. Right? So that, that'll create some distance if they think you were just born good. That'll create a lot of distance in and of itself. Like, I don't man, what you got to share with me? Like, you didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth the whole time. I'm going through some stuff. So, no, you, you're 100% right. We got uh, we to have that discussion. We got to be open and honest. We got to be able to share with folk the things that we went through and how God brought us through. Amen? Anybody else? All right, let's close out. God, Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for just showing us Jesus' authority over demons, oh God. We, we, we want to acknowledge his authority, not only over demons, but over our lives as well. We ask right now, oh Lord, that you just continue to lead us and guide us. 
continue to show us your ways. Continue to allow us to show your glory to the worst memorial, oh Lord. Please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.